It is Tuesday, November 17th. I am Matt Stoner here with Stephen Anthony Lawrence, also known as Beans, and our good friend Max Rice. Today we are going to be talking once again about voter fraud that either did or did not happen, depending on uh, where you get your news from. Gentlemen, what are our thoughts? It's been an interesting week in terms of the election, uh, especially after Trump's own Homeland Security Department said that this was the most secure election in American history. What are our thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that a fly that is that lives in chicken shit, the entire world is chicken shit. And so uh, voter fraud is has been around, like so voter fraud in election has been lo longer, been around longer than voting. And so, uh, like I think it's just we need to stop being so dismissive about it, because like in in the U.S. it's been happening at the presidential level from 1968 to Gregory when he accidentally got nine million votes. In 2000, uh, the Florida elections wasn't just about hanging chads. In the last 20 years, it's all been about uh, digital voter fraud. So that allegedly happened in 2000, 2004. Allegedly happened again uh, with Alvin Alvin Green in I think uh, the 2008 South Carolina uh, primaries. It happened in the local level in New Jersey to poor little Cynthia, uh, I'm blanking on her last name. But so uh, so the, the biggest vulnerability for the last 20 years has been like software election voter frauds. Academics have been saying this, Democrats have been saying this, Republicans have been saying this, hackers have been saying this, like Congress has been saying this, the news media has been saying this up until like three days ago. And so uh, I don't trust Department of Homeland Security I guess you guys do <laughs> for the last four years. That's kind of been the consistent thing is people kind of trust government only when it suits their arguments. But uh, there's definitely a lot of reasons to to be worried because uh, I could learn how to they, 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 you could they, you, they say you could hack these machines in less than 10 seconds. And this is state government saying this. There was a, a hacker conference in DEF CON where they. They uh, yeah hacked the machines in in ten seconds. The companies themselves, Dominion, said that yeah there there are vulnerabilities. And if you go on YouTube, right, there's been uh, three documentaries in the last five years from HBO. It's been on on TV on Fusion. There's a great there's a great piece uh, from like I think a couple years ago, like probably 2017, about uh, vote voter fraud, specific software voter fraud in Pennsylvania, and big concerns about the company Dominion. And so it used to be a non-controversial thing, but Trump lost. So I think the 79 to 70 million Americans that voted for for Biden don't want to kind of dive deep into it. When My they, turn. Yeah, your turn. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. We're not talking about history. We're talking about what is actually happening in America today. As of now, Trump has had 10 lawsuits. He has lost all of them. Judges generally don't comment on cases. But one of the judges in these cases has already gone on record by calling the Trump administration's defense as in hearsay, wrapped in hearsay, wrapped in an enigma. Um, yeah, we, we've had quote unquote dead voters come out of the public and say, no, I'm alive. I'm, I'm not dead. Um, now the Trump administration is alleging as much as 700 thousand illegal votes in the state of Pennsylvania as of, uh, gosh, to, uh, the su Sunday. Uh, and we have no evidence. The governor of, Texan, uh, of Texas has already offered a reward. You know why you offer a reward in a case if you've ever tried anybody? It's because you don't have any freaking evidence. It's because, <laughs> no, it's because they have no evidence. If you've ever ran an investigation into anybody... It is because you don't have any evidence, okay? We have had, if you think for a second that after the 2016 election, they weren't looking into fraud and making sure every vote was legit before, I don't know what you're smoking, homie. Well, I, I, think, I think you yourself were concerned about the Iowa Democratic primaries with the shadow app there. And the, the recent election in Bolivia, there's a lot of people from the left are saying that there's voter fraud there. People are talking about voter fraud in the Putin election, which was a couple years ago. So I, I, I agree with you. It's like almost impossible to find evidence with that kind of software hacking because it's done at that level. Uh, so the question is, like, are you interested in – is that something that we should think about? Should we, should we kind of try to assure the public that there wasn't any hacking? Should we be looking for evidence? 
So at this point, it does seem like that, you, mostly Republicans are coming out at this point and saying that it's a, a travesty that Trump is going out and saying things like there are fraudulent votings and all of these different things. So I don't necessarily yeah, think because those are the Republicans that were hacking the elections eight years ago. That's the problem. Because the, the reason why there isn't really anything done on electric security is because, as I said, like there is a consensus. Like it, this is kind of like there is a scientific consensus amongst the academics, journalists, serious people that there are serious vulnerabilities in like electronic voting it used to be not a controversial thing fact. but here's republicans a, benefited we, in some we, states and democrats benefit in others looking, yeah we've been looking for a week now for for voter fraud we've been looking for a week and we have found four cases of fraud only four one of them actually voted for trump twice in pennsylvania if it was some mass thing don't you think we'd have found more than four votes already no because you can't prove it because of the, the problem is the, the what the allegation is is electric vote voter fraud hacking and like, if you vote in in that way, you can't you like you yourself can't prove that you voted for who you say you voted for, and that's so, the problem. I, They're I, unauditable, and they've been there's been hearings up until like you know months ago, and everyone agrees, even the vendors them say this is a problem and we need to work about it in the future. But it wasn't corrected for this election, and Pennsylvania and Dominion voting system, which has like thirty percent market share, were specific issues, and that's a problem too. So there's like this only situation. five electronic voting companies. And there really isn't too much oversight. Like what in Chicago, they they failed the you know, they failed the the the, the, the like, you know the optional bar that they were they were supposed to be held to. What is the option to sort of fix something like this? You know, you can go through, especially in an election in which there were so many mail-in ballots. There is a possibility to go through and redo a hand count, which is what's happening in Georgia. Aside from going through and verifying all of the ballots individually, is there any way that you can see going through so that even the most staunch objectors of voter fraud are placated I think uh, well that's a different kind of fraud the mail-in voter fraud because it's definitely uh, like what I'm talking about is like software hacking and that like that's that would be just solved by getting rid of e-voting and that's just a way of tabulating votes but for for, ma for mail-in fraud I just like uh, just kind of having just uh, more proof that the and just kind of I think we definitely should outlaw the ballot harvesting. harvesting. Uh huh. And you want to know what happens when you attack mail in voting? I'm not attacking mail in voting. I'm not attacking it. No, yeah. or, or, well, Trump. I'm talking Trump electronic or, voting. Trump, yeah. But Trump, Trump has. But when you do that, for the first time in history, the majority of the military, especially active duty people that can only vote by mail, felt a little attacked by that, and a lot of them voted Democrat. For the first time in history. So, you know, when you attack mail in voting, which is how. Our, our veteran, not our veterans, our active duty troop people vote. You know, what does that say to them? Yeah, but what does it say when you care about, like, when you are just like, election security is the biggest issue and Russia hacked the election in like four years having Senate committee investigations, and then we have an election, it goes the way you want it to go, and then it's just like, nah, 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 it's okay. Our I guy mean, won. Trump it's been one week. Trump there's no is, evidence. It's been one week. There's no Trump evidence. Trump voted by mail. Yeah. Like literally, literally every every election except this one when he wanted to make a point. Yeah. But when but I, when you I, when I you know. agree that that is kind of the easiest way to, if if you were to defraud an election, that'd be the easiest way to do it. Is you would think that at this point there would be some no. level of uh, or an, an indication that something had in fact happened. You know, Stephen was mentioning earlier. I think he said Ted. At this point, it's a little over twelve. I believe twelve lawsuits that have been shut down in court. Every single one of them is devoid of evidence, and it does seem like most of these hotlines that are being set up uh, seem to have inaccurate or falsified information. Um, do you think that there should be some sort of penalty for falsifying information regarding this in order to sort of cut down on the fake news aspect of this fraud, or is there a way to really do that without infringing on people's free speech? Oh, anyone watching this right now, because there are people that are, that are just spreading completely fake, complete bogus stories on, on Facebook and social media. Not sure if they should go to jail, but like just shame on you, scum of the scum, scum of the earth. But uh, on like, uh, why isn't there any proof in twelve days? There actually kind of have have been, uh, like like at least anomalies and people like testifying. But the thing that I love about America is that you do have to prove things beyond a reasonable doubt. And I don't think Trump is gonna get there. But there's tons of reasons to have reasonable doubt, and no one should be dismissive because that's why we don't get anywhere on any issue. Because in 2000, 2004, Republicans didn't give a shit about voter security. And then it just kind of just switches every every time your guy's in power. Or girl. Or girl. 
The good thing about yeah, this yeah. this election is for the we've had the most votes period of any election anyways. We've had the most turnout. You wonder if that was why a good reason because Cuz of software hacking. Easier hacker. no because we made it easier to vote. We extended how long you could vote. We 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 sent, you know, people ballots. We 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 you know, we made it so easy to vote. We extended the time you could vote. Uh, and, and for this this is good for democracy. Okay, we need to keep this going. Literally, we need to make it easier to vote, not harder for people. Well, see, that's can we compromise that we should make it easier? Like, I'm down for it. Like, first of all, that's been going on for a while, the long, the early voting periods. But like, can we agree that like, uh, I'm, I, we should make access more available, but we security should be an issue. A, a fifth of all voting machines are pro, like through the supply chain are processed through China, and over 55 percent, I think it's 58 percent. Are come from parts from China and Russia, and so, like your my your guy might benefit, our girl might benefit this time, but just try to be, try to be consistent. You know, the seasons change. Yeah. I wouldn't be against making improvements to our infrastructure, but that's a totally different. Yeah, argument. people have been saying that for twenty years, but we've like have we've thrown money at it, but there's been no material Im- improvements in the security. And it was, I think it was DEF CON last, last year, where they hacked the machines in 10 seconds. It's, 10 seconds. An, it's a non-issue because we've only found four cases so far, okay? The CIA, the FBI had four years to plan for this. I'm sure they're not going to share all their strategies to the general public. And to a fly in chicken shit, the world is chicken shit. All right, did I say horse shit? I forgot what animal shit. But that's what I'm saying. Just because there, there isn't ev- evidence today or an absence of evidence doesn't mean that there's something there. And they didn't pull some out because by design it really is easy to to make it happen yeah. without a trace because it's done at the software level. And the, the case in New Jersey it was like a local election where it was like forty votes, so it was easy to prove because she was like her name was Cheryl, I forgot her last name, but because she's like, hey, I know I knew everyone in the election, I I won, and they literally reversed the. Your say will never stand up in a court of law, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's gonna do it yeah. for today again. He say uh, well though. Exactly. So uh, we yeah. have a score as of the end of the day. If you were watching our video yesterday, we are going to be doing a truth or dare throughout the week. We are at a score of seven to four as of today. Mr. Rice is winning for this week, which means Steven, that's, uh, we're, we're going to play step it up for the next few days. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be talking to you tomorrow once again, uh, where we're going to be discussing the recent COVID vaccines and all of the progress being made with those. See you tomorrow.